Hi, my name is Alexander Rath. In this talk, I will introduce you to EAS, Efficiency Aware Russian Roulette and Splitting, a novel approach to Russian Roulette and Splitting which achieves up to four times the performance of the previous state of the art as demonstrated here in the country kitchen scene. Our talk will start by revisiting the underlying ideas such as path tracing and Russian Roulette. Based on this, we see how previous works apply these techniques in practice and we'll discuss their strengths as well as their shortcomings. With these in mind, we'll motivate our own novel theory and detail how it can be implemented in practice. And finally, we'll demonstrate the performance of our approach on a large set of test scenes. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the background of our talk, starting with light transport. Here, we see a virtual scene consisting of a camera, light source, as well as surfaces that can reflect light. The goal is to simulate the image captured by the virtual camera as faithful to reality as possible. This problem is known as light transport simulation and involves finding and evaluating all possible connections between camera and light sources. A simple yet powerful technique to solve this problem is path tracing. In path tracing, rays are initiated at the camera and repeatedly intersected with the scene. At each intersection, a new ray in a random direction is spawned. And once we reach the light source, this so formed sequence of rays is a connection between the camera and the light source, resulting in a contribution to our image. The strength of this contribution will be proportional to the strength of the light source, as well as the surface albedos encountered along the way. Now, since this is a random process, there will be some noise associated with it. By averaging many of these random walks through our scene, we obtain a smooth render. An important issue in path tracing, but also more sophisticated light transport techniques, is that not all paths are going to contribute equally. Consider a path that has bounced multiple times over dark surfaces. It is less likely to contribute as much as a path that has only seen bright surfaces. This is problematic because the time we invest exploring low contributing paths could also be invested exploring high contributing paths instead, which would result in a faster convergence of our image. Now this means it is desirable to somehow alter the distribution with which we generate paths. One way to achieve this would be to change the random distribution with which new rays are spawned at each intersection. This is known as importance sampling and is a key ingredient in techniques like path guiding. Our focus for today, however, will be a different yet equally fundamental technique to redistribute paths and is known as Russian Roulette. In Russian Roulette, at each intersection, we introduce a random chance that the path will be terminated. This can greatly reduce computational cost, but also incur some additional noise due to the additional random process. The probability with which a path is continued is known as survival, probab survival probability and is made dependent on properties of the path, such as the albedos that we have encountered. A careful choice of survival probability will drastically improve our render because it can save a lot of time that would otherwise be waste, wasted exploring low contributing paths and ideally only slightly increases the noise in our render. But Russian Roulette is only half the story. There's a complementary technique that is known as splitting. In splitting, we can actually shoot more than just a single ray at each intersection. The number of rays shot is known as the splitting factor and will again depend on properties of the path. This can help reduce noise but of course also incurs some additional computational cost. A careful choice of splitting factors will focus splitting on important regions that cause a lot of noise in the image, but will otherwise only slightly increase the cost of the entire render. Now, Russian Roulette and splitting work best when they are combined. This way, the time that is saved by Russian Roulette from lower contributing regions can be invested by splitting to explore more promising areas. In the following, we'll use the term splitting factor as a single number to refer to both Russian Roulette for values less than 1, as well as splitting for values above 1. 
Let us now see how these techniques have been used in practice. Starting with the most popular approach known as albedo-based Russian roulette. Here, the survival probability is set to the surface albedo of the current intersection. This means that surfaces that are darker tend to have a higher termination chance than surfaces that are bright. Despite its simplicity, this method works surprisingly well in practice, as it can drastically reduce the time that would otherwise be spent on low contributing paths. And since Russian roulette affects mostly low contributing paths, the additional noise incurred on the render is um, kept to a minimum. However, this method performs suboptimally when the light distribution in our scene is uneven. A bright surface like this floor, for instance, can actually contribute little if it happens to be in shadow. This means we want to be awareness, we want some awareness of illumination. And luckily, this is exactly what a joint-driven Russian roulette and splitting provides. In a joint-driven Russian roulette and splitting, the splitting factor is set to the contribution of the fully completed path. Of course, we do not know the complete path yet, we have only seen its beginning. But by utilizing statistics that we can build over earlier paths that we have completed in the render, we can actually get an estimate for what the remainder of the path will look like. This allows us to estimate what the full contribu contribution of the path would be. This is still fairly straightforward to implement and actually works very well with uneven lighting situations like depicted here. However, this approach has two main drawbacks in practice. First of all, it does not take variance into account. A path that has a low expected contribution might actually still need to be split if it incurs a lot of noise in our image. Likewise, it also does not take cost into account. A path that might have high expected contribution might actually still need to be terminated if the cost of reaching the light source is not justified. Luckily, both of these drawbacks are addressed by the work of Boulin and Meyer. They formulate finding splitting factors as an optimization problem, where the goal is to minimize the noise of the rendered image under a fixed number of rays. Unfortunately, solving this optimization problem analytically for all points throughout the scene is not feasible, so the authors propose simplifying the problem to fewer variables. They achieve this by sharing splitting factors spatially. So splitting factors are only allowed to depend on the number of intersections that have been encountered so far, as well as the pixel that the path has originated from, but they are not allowed to depend on the position of the current intersection. While this successfully takes the distribution of light, noise and cost into account, their method is still unsuitable for practical use. And also, the simplification introduced by the authors severely impacts the quality of the splitting factors obtained. Now that we have seen how previous works approach Russian roulette and splitting, let us see how our approach tackles these challenges. In Efficiency Aware Russian Roulette and Splitting, or ES for short, we formulate the problem of finding splitting factors as an efficiency optimization problem. Efficiency is just the inverse product of variance and cost of our rendered image. Or put simply, we are maximizing the rate with which our rendered image will converge. This is somewhat similar to Boulin and Meyer's approach, albeit without the fixed ray budget. And also, we're using a fundamentally different approach to solving this optimization problem. This avoids the drawbacks of Boulin and Meyer's approach and still retains the simplicity of a joint-driven Russian led and splitting. We'll start by discussing the theoretical motivation of our technique, and then we'll follow it up with some details on how it can be implemented. We have already learned that an analytical solution to the splitting factors is not feasible. In our paper, however, however, we show that a numerical solution can be found instead. We achieve this by devising a novel fixed point scheme. This works by starting with an initial guess for the splitting factors, for instance using albedo-based Russian roulette, and then refining them iteratively throughout rendering. In our paper, we also prove that this converges to the solution of the optimization problem without any simplifications. Now, while the theory of our paper might be somewhat involved, the resulting algorithm is actually surprisingly simple to implement. At its core, 
All we do is collect path statistics, just like a joint-driven Russian roulette and splitting does. But in addition to light intensity, we are also building estimates of the variance of paths, so how noisy the remainder of the path tends to be, as well as the cost, so how many bounces tend to be needed to reach the light source. For our implementation, we actually use the same data structure as for a joint-driven Russian roulette and splitting. We partition the scene spatially, and when we need some statistics to compute a splitting factor, we just look up the current intersection point, and the corresponding region will contain a histogram over outgoing directions, where we can look up the last race direction, and get the histogram cell, which contains all the necessary statistics like light intensity, noise, and cost. The beautiful thing about our method is that its fixed point scheme is solved implicitly just by collecting these statistics. This means there's next to no additional cost over a joint driven Russian lead and splitting. Now, while all of this might sound great in theory, let me actually now demonstrate how our method performs in practice. For this, we have evaluated its performance on a large set of test scenes. We are comparing its path tracing performance against previous works like albedo-based Russian roulette and the previous state-of-the-art, a joint-driven Russian roulette and splitting. On average, our method is 52% faster than the previous state-of-the-art. And compared to albedo-based Russian roulette, we are almost six times as fast on average. I will now walk you through what we consider, consider to be the most interesting findings. First of all, note that the benefits of sophisticated Russian roulette and splitting techniques depend mostly on the complexity of the scene. A simple scene like the modern living room, with its mostly direct and even illumination, will benefit little from a joint-driven Russian roulette or our method. While a scene like the bookshelf scene, that is significantly more complex, will see more severe gains. Here, the scene is illuminated by the small illuminated patch on the wall. Albedo-based Russian roulette is unaware of the illumination and only sees that the wall is relatively dark and will tend to terminate paths. A joint-driven Russian roulette and splitting, and our method, however, are aware of the illumination, and hence they split paths that land in this region so that more, li more paths will reach the light source. This significantly improves the, uh, the convergence of the render. Let us now look at what we consider to be the most challenging scene in our test set, namely the country kitchen scene. Similar to the bookshelf scene, we have a lot of indirect illumination from a small illuminated area. However, here this small illuminated area is a caustic. This means that paths that land in this region can't directly reach a light source. They have to refract multiple times through this glass table. This is very challenging for path tracing and introduces a lot of noise in this region. A joint-driven Russian roulette and splitting is unaware of this noise and only sees a mild amount of illumination. Hence, it also performs only a mild amount of splitting. Our method, however, is aware that this region causes a lot of noise in our scene and hence performs aggressive amounts of splitting, resulting in an overall four times as fast convergence of this scene. Now, of course, our method is not perfect. In our test set, we have actually found one scene that performs worse than the previous state of the art. This is the glossy bathroom scene, a scene with fairly even illumination, but many glossy surfaces. Now, while we still perform better than a bido based Russian roulette, we are actually 9% worse than a joint-driven Russian roulette and splitting. This is mainly due to issues with estimating variance on glossy surfaces, which we address in more detail in our paper. There, you can also find some more comparisons and tests including convergence tests of our fixed point scheme, comparisons against Russian roulette only, and also comparisons with adaptive sampling and path guiding. But unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. So let us conclude by revisiting what we have presented in this talk. We have seen that Russian roulette and splitting are fundamental techniques for redistributing paths. We have seen how previous works approach it and discuss their strengths as well as their shortcomings. Now, our approach combines the strengths of previous approaches by optimizing efficiency, but it still remains practically feasible and simple to implement. We have also demonstrated that our approach achieves up to four times the performance of the previous state of the art. With this, I would like to close by thanking all the great people involved in this work, in particular our reviewers as well as the creators of our test scenes. 
Enjoy the conference and stay safe. Bye.